This is Math 432 Applied Combinatorics. I'm Professor Asa, and for this series, we're going to be beginning with a motivational problem. Consider an array of cell phone towers. Now, in order to work properly, any two towers that are close together have to be on different frequencies. So we want to ask ourselves, how can we set the frequencies of the towers so that we don't have a problem with two towers being close together, having the same frequency? Well, one thing we can do is if we have infinite resources, say we have um, five different towers and we have five different frequencies, then we could just put a different frequency on each tower and it's no problem. But the problem is more interesting when we consider the constrained problem where we only have, for example, three different frequencies. So let's say these are our frequencies, pink, green, and blue. And now we have to assign them. Now I'll say close together, maybe 50 miles in theory, but we'll say a popsicle stick means that they're too close together to get the same frequency. So let's start and let's just assign a frequency here. And now we can say, okay, these guys are too close together, so he's gonna have to have a different frequency. What about these guys? These guys are too close together, so it can't be blue, and actually those are too close together, so it also can't be pink. So it's gonna have to be green. Okay, what about here? Are these guys way too close together, but oh, I'm not too close to the pink or the blue, so it could be pink or blue. Let's maybe let it be pink. And now we can look at this guy and say, okay, well, it can't be pink. Still can't be pink. Oh, it could be green or blue. What the heck? Let's make it blue. Okay, so here's one way that we could assign frequencies to these cell phone towers. Now, what did we just do with measuring with the stick? We were testing a property, the property that they're within 50 miles of one another. Whenever we have a problem like that, really, we should be using a graph. So what we have is a case where we have our four, sorry, five towers that are arranged like this. And now we're going to put an edge between the towers when they're close together. So with our popsicle stick measuring, we realize there were edges like this. So now the question is, how can we assign colors to the vertices so that we don't have what's called a monochromatic edge? So we've colored this one red and this one red. We've colored this one blue and this one blue and we've colored this one green. So this is one solution to the problem. And this brings up the problem of graph coloring. Now, when we're doing this mathematically, it's actually easier if we think of assigning numbers. So we could say pink is one, blue is two, and green is three. And what we want is that if any two numbers or any two vertices are connected by an edge, they have to have different numbers. But it's a lot more exciting if we think of this as coloring. So we're gonna keep the analogy of colorings and that's really what it's called. So what does it mean for a graph to be colorable? Here's the definition. A graph is k-colorable if the vertices can be assigned values from one up to k such that no two neighbors have the same value. So we saw that the cell phone graph, so let's maybe throw in our edges that we had here. Um, I think these guys are close together. Hopefully we've got enough edges to finish this off. I do, great. So we saw that this graph is K colorable for K equal three. It's also 118 colorable, obviously, if it had 118 colors, but it's three colorable. And we could see that three was actually the minimum number of colors that I could use. So it's interesting to ask, not just is a graph colorable, but what's the smallest? So let's think about some examples of graphs that we could use. So let's think about the examples of um, cycles. So CN is generally what we'll call the cycle on N vertices. So we can see here, we have an example of C3. So C3 is the cycle with three vertices. Let's think about C4. So C4, let's put in the node, the edges, and think about how could we color that. So we needed three colors to color a triangle, but what do we need to color a square? Well, previously we, we'd use three colors there too, but we could actually do it with just two colors. So that's kind of interesting. And now what if we wanted to add another vertex, say in the middle, or maybe pulling this one out, we wanted to add another vertex. Here, what would we have to do? Well, we can't make it pink, sorry, or blue. So we'd have to make it green. So it's easy to see that CN is two colorable if n is even, 
and it's three colorable if n is odd. So the even case, if I have an even cycle like I had with the four, I can just alternate pink, blue, pink, blue, pink, blue, and I, when at the time I get back, the parity will be correct. That's too colorable. But if I have an odd cycle like I had here, I can do the same thing, only the problem is I'll, I'll get stuck at one vertex. But I always can use just one green to kind of finish it up and take this even part here and make it too colorable and then add one more color to get that. So the cycle we saw, the minimum number of colors that I need is three if it's odd or two if it's even. And that idea of the minimum K for which I could be K colorable is what we call the chromatic number of a graph. So the chromatic number, we use the Greek letter chi to denote it, is the smallest integer K such that the graph is K colorable. Let's do another example. Let's do another example of, let's compute chi of t, where t is a tree. How would we do this? So let's take our colors away, and let's just think about building a tree. So we've got lots of edges here, and it's a tree, so we should obviously start with green. Okay, so let's throw on maybe some shorter edges so that we can make a nice big graph. Okay, so maybe I'll put like three vertices down from this node and make it, well, I can't make any of these green, so they're gonna have to be a different color. Okay, fine. And now let's add some more edges so I could add a couple edges down here. Now, the point is to try to use as few colors as possible. So if I can repeat, I will. So I can definitely use green again. And I can add an edge here and I could, I could use green for that. Okay, now what else could I do? Well, I could keep going and I could keep building down. So build down from here, or I could, well, I could use blue again. So we can see that if we start at one vertex of my tree, and it doesn't matter which one, we color it green. And then we look at all of its neighbors, we color them blue. And now step down again, color them all green. And step down again, color them all blue. Because a tree, by definition, is a graph with no cycles, I'm never gonna try to color a vertex twice. So I'll always be able to do this. So chi of t, for t a tree, is two. So every tree is two colorable. Next we'll look at all graphs that are two colorable and the special properties that they have.